Hi, everybody. Hi. I hope you can mute yourselves or whatever, but can you see this is Diana right here? Diana McIntyre, remember her? Okay. <laughs> There's somebody Yay! waving her hand. Absolutely. Hi, Diana. And she's going to she's going to do her marine mammal reviews um, this week, this Thursday and next Thursday. And as you know, Diana is the is the creator of PVIC, um, and she was here for 32 years. So let's learn some of her knowledge. Okay. Uh, Anne, would you have Diana move a little bit more forward or move the camera so that we can see her a little bit better? You want me to turn a light on? Of uh, um, a light would help, and also bring the camera a little bit closer to her face. So I just brought it closer. Is that close enough? Tilt it, tilt it towards her. Is that good? Yeah, that's okay. a little better. Okay. Hi, those sons. Most of you I know. There's a few new folks here, uh, so you probably have heard this before, but um, we're just going to go over all of the marine mammals. I, that there are, and I think some of them you may not realize are marine mammals. I will spend a little more time on the ones that we have locally. Not a lot, just a little. And um, so I guess we're ready to get started. I have a question. Anne, this is Adela. Are you recording the um, presentation? Yes. I don't know. That's up to Anne. I don't know if she's doing that or not. Yes, this presentation is being recorded. Okay. Thank okay, you. Sorry to interrupt. Thank you. Okay. So you can watch it another time. So we are talking about cetaceans, whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Um, porpoises and dolphins are slightly different. They're similar, but different. And we'll talk about the carnivores, meat eaters. The pinnipeds, sea lions, fur seals, seals, and walrus. And the car more carnivores, the sea otter and the polar bears. And the serinian, these were the mermaids of the sea. Uh, manatees and dugongs. And what is an animal? We use the W-H-A-I-R on the left. We have trouble with the E, but we're working eats milk. Ah, they are warm-blooded. You are one of these also. Uh, warm-blooded, they have hair. Dolphins and whales do have hair. They are air-breathing, you give live birth, and you eat milk. Now, what do they have in common? Most are fusiform shaped. They're larger in the middle and, and tapered at each beginning and end. Um, they are voluntary breathers, and they have, most of these have blubber. Those are in a different color because those uh, uh, affect certain animals, but not all of them. Navigation. I think you may have had another talk on that, but that's migration, communication, and finding food. Um, also, we'll talk about mating and raising young. Navigation, communication by toothed whales. This is different with baleen whales. These guys echolocate from the melon that's in, the, in their forehead. Somewhere behind that, they produce sounds that go out and touch whatever they're interested in. The sound comes back to the lower jaw, which is hollow shows at the lower part and the ear bone is hanging down right behind there so that's how they find their way find their food um, even find out your emotions if you're swimming with them um, okay this one's showing a squid but there's the melon above it's like an onion it's in rings it, it's uh, oily uh, squishable Interesting. Now these, we have three of these are on the wall. Uh, the, this is baleen whales. And on the left is a cross section of the first part showing the esophagus and the lynx. And down below is a sound sack. And this just recently has been found to find where they make some of their sounds. 
And the sounds go through the ocean in the SOFAR panel, which is partly the bottom of it is by the sound. Uh, let's see, oh, I'm for, forgetting and I can't read that. Um, there's sort of a channel in the ocean that the sound the animals can use to communicate. And it goes for thousands of miles. Other cetaceans. We'll talk about the baleen whales first, the myocetes. Uh, they all have two blowholes at the surface, and they have baleen instead of teeth. Now, you don't have to remember all this. I'm just trying to give you an overview so you have some idea of where the animals we're working with go. Um, other baleen whales, but in different families than the gray whale, is the blue whale. We've been having a lot of those in the Santa Barbara Channel right now. Uh, fin whales, we get one out here, one or two that are out most of the year right offshore. Say whales, one was seen recently. They like warmer water, but uh, usually they're to the south of us. And Brutus whales, one of those they like warmer water too. One of those was seen not too long ago. Humpback whales, we get a lot of those now during the whale migration season. Uh, I remember when we started this, we would get maybe five a year. Now you can get five in a day. Uh, oh. They've changed their migrating patterns. They come closer to shore. And the minke whale, which is one of the smaller, uh, and it's the only one where you can see the blow and the dorsal fin at the same time. Hmm. Then we have the gray whale. Hmm. It's in a family all by itself. Uh, there aren't any other gray whales, just ours. Uh, well, I'll go into some of them have been wandering in some strange places. And the rest of the Bailey Diana? whale, the right whale. Diana? Yes. Diana? Uh, are, so are the gray whales off the coast of J Japan, in fact, the same whales? Uh, there are. That's, I'll go into a little bit of that later. Okay. When we the gray whale next week there have been some there's been a population over on that side and they thought that it was they didn't know if it was part of ours or if it was a different group and recently they have found out the whales do go back and forth between the one that's on the other shore of the pacific and our shores okay thank you okay uh, and toothed whales all have teeth. They do not have baleen, and they have only one blowhole at the surface. Now, this is consistent. Uh, baleen whales do not have, they do have teeth when they're forming, but those are reabsorbed and they have baleen instead. Toothed whales just have teeth and only one blowhole at the surface. Here's the largest of the toothed whales, that's the sperm whale. We've had a few by here, not a lot, but we get, we get, uh, we get some occasionally. They migrate long areas and they come by here and feed down off of our canyon offshore. And then there are a couple smaller ones, uh, the pygmy and the dwarf sperm whales. I don't show both of those. And then we have river dolphins, but we don't have any here in North America. There are some in South America and in India and in China, but not here. Big whales. Um, there are 21 or 22 kinds of beaked whales. They're very deep divers. They stay underwater most of the time. They come up occasionally to breathe and then they're gone. Again, they're down. Um, I think I show here there's 21. I think there's 22 or 23 now. They're pretty hard to study because they're at the surface so such a small time. Then we have the Indian River Dolphin. He's in a different class than the other uh, dolphin. Then we have the White Whales, the Beluga on the left, upper left, and the Narwhal. The, the Narwhal has these um, that's a tooth, actually. His, 
It's his left tooth that grows through his lip and out. Mostly it's males that have them. Occasionally a female will have both go out into tusks. And then we have true porpoises. Uh, the one on the left, lower left, is the doll's porpoise. We occasionally see it if it's cold enough. The one on the right is the vaquita that's in the Sea of Cortez that's extremely, uh, extremely rare now, I'm sorry to say. It gets caught in the, in the illegal fishing nets that are down there. There may be six or ten left. That's all. In the tooth whale family, the dolphins. Now, I think it's 35. Um, it depends whether you're a, a lumper or a splitter. Uh, some people will take a group of killer whales and then there'll be another group and they say, no, that's a separate group there, you know, and they count that as another one. Others will take all of them and strump them together and, and uh, then you have fewer, so to speak. And it changes almost daily. Uh, I can't keep up with it. We have at the upper left, what people call orcas, they're killer whales. In the middle is a pilot whale. On the right is a resource dolphin. Uh, in the center section left is common dolphin, bottlenose dolphin, and Pacific North, let's see, North Pacific right whale dolphin. Down below, I've forgotten what the one on the left is. The one in the middle is the Pacific white-sided dolphin. And on the right, I have forgotten that one too. But you don't need to know it, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, here's some more. These are, there's Fraser's dolphin is in there. Lower left is the pink dolphin of Hong Kong. They call it the white dolphin, but they tend to be somewhat pink. Uh, on the right is the um, the one in New Zealand. What is it? Fraser. No, Fraser's is up in the middle. Anyway, there's lots. Then we're going to pinnipeds, which means either feather foot, winged foot, or fin foot. The one we see the most is the California sea lion on the left. Uh, we have a pup. They come down, so occasionally pull, pull out down below the interpretive center. You can see them there. Um, marine land, which is now Pyrenea, uh, they, have, they call it Sea Lion Point. If there aren't people around, they haul out down there. If there are people around, they stay away. Then we have on the right the northern fur seal, which we didn't used to get very many. We got, occasionally we got them, they're related to sea lions. They're not related to seals, even though it's called a seal. It has ear, pinniped, pinna, or little ears <coughs> that stick out, and it can walk on all four, uh, all four appendages. Uh, but we do get a few of these. There is a breeding colony on San Miguel Island, but the rest of them are further north. Pinnipeds. This is the walrus. Uh, I'm trying to think if we have one around here. Um, sometimes some of the zoos or people have things, but I don't think we have one here. These are in the north around, around polar. But um, I don't know. More pinnipeds. Harbor seals, we see these occasionally. They are offshore. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a true seal. There's no pinna sticking out here. Their eyes are larger. The hind feet cannot come up underneath them. They cannot walk on all four like sea lions and fur seals can. Um, the northern elephant seal we see occasionally. We see pups that are stranding. Um, they breed offshore and down in Baja. <coughs> And uh, I don't know if we have time to go into all the breeding. It's sort of interesting, but uh, we'll do that another time, I guess. The polar bear. Now, some people don't realize it is a marine mammal because it's also considered 
a terrestrial mammal, so the scientists have to go to more meetings. Um, we have one at, at least one, at the LA Zoo, and their skin is actually black underneath, and the, the hairs are hollow. So sometimes they look a little green if algae's grown inside of there. Depends how clean they keep the water. Big, powerful animal. And then we have the sea otter. Uh, we used to have a lot of them offshore here. They were hunted. In fact, many people thought they were completely lost, but they, uh, they found some up in Central California and they have replanted them up and down. And we occasionally get some off of here, but not very often. Uh, faces are white. Dugongs and sea cows. Um, these are related to manatees. Manatees are not here. They're in Florida and they're in South America and in their parts of Africa. But um, we, we found some manatee bones here one time off, off of where the, the pier for Marineland was and found out someone had brought carcasses up here and they had dissected them and that's why the bones were here. That was interesting to figure that out. Where do they come from? Boy, that's, <laughs> here's some of the thoughts of where they have come from. Um, we know they started out in the ocean, and then they went to land, but which form did they take? Probably their closest land relative is the hippopotamus, uh, then they went back to the sea. Now, every paleontologist I know has a different tree. They're not all exactly like this, but this is a pretty general one of where they think they basically came from and when they split between the Mysticete and the Adonisite, the tooth whales and the baleen whales. They did split. For a long time, we thought they were completely separate, but now we know they were at one time were both related. And this is at Cabrillo. These uh, <coughs> models were made by a member down at the Natural History Museum. He was doing great with it, and then he became allergic to the chemicals and couldn't do this anymore. Oh my gosh. So as a, a review whale, um, the fusiform shape, they're large. I don't know if I would mentioned that before. Most have blubber. Now, they, the exception is the sea otter, does not have blubber. It has fabulous fur, the 10 of fur, thousands of fibers in, in a square inch. They're uh, volunteer breathers. We are automatic breathers. They are volunteer. They do not automatically breathe after so much length of time. They have to come to the surface and get air. Uh, I know we had a sea lion pull out, a big one, down below the center, and he didn't move, and somebody came and told me he was dead. And I looked at his condition, and I said, no, just wait. And we waited, and then he raised his head and took a big breath, and then he went back <coughs> down again. And they don't breathe when they're sleeping. Uh, whales, we have both baleen whales and toothed whales. Uh, pinnipeds, we had sea lion and the fur seal. And then we had true seals, the, the wiggling seals. Sea lions and fur seals are the walking seals, so to speak. Walrus is somewhere between a seal and a sea lion. Um, polar bears, we mentioned uh, sea otter, manatees, and that's the end. It went quicker than I thought. Is there anything right. else you want to talk about, or is that it? Say again? Is there anything else you want to talk about, or is that it? I think that's it. I'll take questions. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have one. Okay. Um, do the um, oh, lost my train of thought. Um, what? If, 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 take somebody, take somebody else. I oh. lost the. Who else has a question? 
Okay, here, here it is. Do sperm whales echolocate the way the other toothed whales do since their head is a different shape? I heard the first part, do sperm whales echolocate? Yes, that they may use that to stun their prey. Okay, thank you. Diane? Yes. That's this one. The, and like sperm whales doing echolocating, how far does that sound travel under the water? It depends on the volume. Uh, sperm whales can, go, can echo like for long distances and I'm not going to, several miles anyway. Several, okay, that's good enough, okay. Most dolphins, it's less than a mile. Uh, Diana, this is yeah. Pat Parker. I'm invisible. <laughs> But uh, I'm interested in that communication zone you mentioned in the ocean. Yes. Is that a, a number of feet deep? You know, how far from the surface is that? And is that affected by uh, boats and things? It's affected by the, what is it? The la there's a layer. The scattering yeah. is the top of it. I have forgotten with the bottom and it changes constantly. It's closer to the surface, I believe, at night, and then goes down during the day. And uh, But sound is carried much more clearly in that area. But it's everywhere. It's not in a tunnel. It's everywhere. How was that discovered? And, and can you tell us more about it? I think it's fascinating. It is fascinating, and I, you have had somebody who has from Santa Barbara who came. And they will be coming again. Yes. Okay, and they'll go into it in more detail. Oh, um, good. I've sort of hit on it here and there, but don't know uh -huh. all the basics. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. No more questions? Next week, we do two parts. We'll do one part on the, the, the gray whale and one part on whaling as it applies oh, to what we have. Excellent. So next Stella. week, a little longer. Yeah. Today was just shorter. Okay. I have a question. My screen went blank. Yep. D oh, you can't hear me? A little louder. It's oh, a okay. Can, can you hear me now? I don't know. I'm. Yes. I yes. Dell or Joyce? This is Adela. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Diana, do you know uh, the history of when the sea otters were here in Palos Verdes and, uh, and when they disappeared? Sea otters, when did the sea otters disappear? In oh, let me see. The Russians went after the sea otters. Uh, they tried to hire the local Indians to take the sea otters. That was not very successful. Um, boy, I'm bad on dates. Seven to eighteen hundreds, the late eighteen hundreds, I believe. They so they weren't here in our lifetime. Yes, they weren't here in our lifetime. No, no, not in any numbers. That they were thought to be extinct when we first started out here. Uh, now we, they have left them alone and they are, and they have transplanted some. They did a whole transplant out to San Miguel Island, which, because they were worried about ship carrying oil and the oil spill getting into the fur, and then they would not be able to, to um, stay warm because they clean their fur constantly. That's how they stay warm with that thick fur. Um, I took them out to San Miguel. The, I, one of my friends was one of the ones that transported them. He came back with scratches and bites and everything. They did not like going out there. And most did not stay there. They either left or died. Uh, it was, and the fishermen were not allowed to fish out there while they were there. Uh, the whole thing turned out not to be good. Those that left went back to their original place and so far, we haven't had a bad oil spill in the area where they are. 
So uh, that's I good. Think left alone, that's good enough. Thank you, Diana. Do yes, you happen to? This is Michael. Do you happen to know whether there's a a large population of sea otters near Monterey? Yes, there is up there. You could, that's probably one of the easiest places to go to see them is up. Some of them hang out right outside the big aquarium out there. Thank Monterey you. Bay has quite a few. 